Okay, now I got two of them gaskets cut. As long as those um, holes will fit over the studs, we're in good shape. Alright, you want to make sure you get this surface back here clean. And we'll get one of them gaskets on there. Okay, and then I slid that spacer on there. Now, I should have paid more attention. I could go back and look on the video. <clears throat> but this thing, as you see, has a flat spot. I'm just taking a chance putting that down to the inside. Makes the most sense to me. And then I'll add another gasket. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drop this in there and that hole's got to line up, remember? I'm going to get these bolts started in here. Then what I'm going to do is stick the gasket on the back of these bolts. Hope you can see that. And then I can get these started right in here. Now I knew this tab went down, I remember that, because that's that silly bracket. Oops, I just lost my gasket. All right, bear with me here. Now I just got to tighten these right down. And when we tighten these, we want to snug one side and then get the other side snug. I go back a couple times because you don't want to get one side real snug and the other not. And then we'll bend these tabs right over. And I don't have the proper tools, so we'll use the improper tools. And there's them two bolts secure again. Okay, I don't have room to really show you what I'm doing, but I got this carburetor on here loose. And the next thing I'm going to do is get these linkages and the spring back where it belongs. Okay, you got them two studs that stick out there and these nuts hold the carburetor on. i tell you, that was a rough one down in there to get started. When I get into a tight place, what I do is I get me one of these magnets and I put the washer and the nut there. Okay, we'll try this. Well, almost got it, but it's too hard to do one-handed. But you can put that washer and a nut on a magnet, get it down on there, and a lot of times you can even spin it with the magnet on it. You might have to help it some but to get it started on there. Once you get it started, then you can just tighten them up. Okay, then when you go to tighten these up, I usually take and just kind of make sure the carburetor pushed back and seated good. And I'll tighten both of them up by hand or just get them snug. That way I know that this ain't off to an angle or something like that when I tighten it up. So you want them both to be snug to start with and then tighten a little on this side and a little on that side until you get them snug. Okay, now that I got those two tight, I got this um, hose that comes up in here to the air cleaner. I got a fuel line that goes on that fitting right down there. It's just simply push it up over and tighten the clamp. Um, this is where that vent hose comes up over and down this way. And it's right here. We'll have to hook that back up also. Okay, there it is with all the hoses and everything hooked back up. I got everything on it but the air cleaner and that bottom bolt for that dizzy bracket. So I'm going to put that bottom bolt in. Okay, now we're breaking things. This little vent cap thing for the tank, little plastic ear that the hose goes over broke off. So once we get this thing running, I'll just do something different there. I'll drill it out a little bit and epoxy a fitting in there or something. Okay, now the next thing I want to do here is I know this thing had old nasty gas in it, so we're just going to change this fuel filter. So I can see. It actually had a little bit of fuel in it. It would be nice if you guys could smell that shellac, I mean gas that just come out of there. Get that baby up in there. Now this is a universal filter. I figure I'll probably be changing it again soon.
Now the other thing is, I want to take this gas tank and I want to siphon all the gas I can out of it because it is nasty smelling. But I was really impressed because the gas tank doesn't look too bad if you look down inside of it. Alright, so what I'm going to do is use one of these kerosene siphon pumps and that ought to get this out of here. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this gas can. If anybody knows where you can get the lids for these Eagle gas cans, let me know. Maybe. I got two of them and only one's got a lid. I was kind of looking at this thing and it looks like right down there is a bolt. It looks like it has an embossment going up, so I'm going to pull that out and see if I can get the oil to drain out of it. Alright, I know you guys probably can't see a lot there, but I can't either, so it'll work out good for both of us. I'm going to try to get a wrench on there. I know it's not probably the right size wrench. If it fits good. Oh yeah, tight, tight, tight. Okay, I had to put a double wrench on that thing to get that thing out of there. Let's see what happens here. Oil. That's a good sign. We found oil. It's a little bit of crap with that magnetic plug, but not real terrible yet. So I'm going to let this oil drain out of here for a while. And then um, we'll put some fresh oil in there before we try to start it. Okay, I had to use one of these long funnels to get oil back in it. But we got oil back in it. And, um, you know, I don't know if right, wrong, or indifferent. I used this oil. I'm not endorsing that oil. It's just that I had that oil here for lawnmowers and stuff. And air-cooled, air-cooled. I just figured, you know. Now, we got to put a little petrol in there and a battery to um, blow that air cleaner out. Well, that's what I'm going to do now and put it together. And it basically, you just put the filter element in here and put the three screws in. Okay, I'm going to have to put the rest of the air cleaner back on it, but I thought I'd go ahead and fill this carburetor full of gas. Now, this is the bowl vent. So I pulled the hose off of there, and anytime on a carburetor, if I can fill the bowl vent full of gas so that the um, bowl's full, it'll run longer. So I like doing that better than I do just dumping gas down a carburetor. So what I've done is just got a little squirt bottle here, a gear oil bottle. I have some smaller ones, but not out here. I just like to put this right over the vent, and then I just like to fill the carburetor full. Oop. This is going to take two hands. Okay, I think we're down to putting the battery in this thing. Putting the air cleaner back on. Because that piece over there is actually, there's a plunger in the front that's a choke. So I want to put that back together and um, a battery in here. And then we'll try this, I guess. But not on this episode.